On today's episode, Spencer and I are back in the chair, and we are excited to bring you an episode where we are going to cover the four signs your staff need more training, in addition to six incredible hospitality events that you can attend in the next six months. Thank you so much, and enjoy the episode. Nice. Banger. Yeah, yeah. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> That's why you got to do it. That it's one's Im- staying in. It's important to get your vocal ranges, you know? Yeah, when you lose it on the fa, so, la, Homogity. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Virtual GM. It's a Friday here in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sean Cannell. That's a that's an inside joke. It's a good one. We'll tell that story in a couple of weeks when we have Sean on the podcast. Uh, but today is an exciting episode. It's just Spencer and I. Um, it hasn't been just us for a while because no, we it hasn't. interviewed Rich and Rich. Your name yep. has to be Rich to be a, a, Correct. a guest on our podcast, obviously. Yep. Unless your name is Sean Cannell. No doubt. Uh, and then I had a flight get delayed. So Spencer had to fly solo and did an awesome job just taking it on all by himself. It was fun. It, it's more fun doing it with the two of us. Yeah, it's hard. It really gives you an appreciation for those people who sit and talk for an hour like oh every day. Gosh. Yeah, like some of those sports casters. Yeah, yeah, I and like the political it. people who just talk for an hour at a time. I mean, that is a challenging thing. That's a skill. Uh, so it's good to be back. A uh, bunch of updates, but uh, we'll let you start with your segue. Yeah. So um, if you're new to the podcast, we're part of the Entrepreneurial Operating Systems, and we start with a segue, which is a personal win and a business win. I highly encourage you to do this in your hotel or property. So um, my personal win is that yesterday I got the key to my new house. Very exciting. And I got to go tour it, which was cool. You got to take a look. So I've been to your new house before I ever went to your old house. (laughs) That's correct. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, And then uh, my business win is that we've actually been chatting, and we'll bring this up a little bit more. Uh, but with the new hotel, the Hotel Zaz in New Mexico, you can check them out at Hotel Zaz, Z-A-Z-Z dot com. Uh, they're right right on uh, Route 66, which is really cool. It looked like Mallory was maybe going to pull them up. This, oh, yeah, you should thing, do that. It's super cool. Yeah, this hotel is actually really amazing. So uh, shout out to Charmin, uh, who listens to the podcast. And uh, we should be getting started on uh, revenue management marketing. Yeah, I'm excited to talk more about it because it's such a cool property. Yep. So those are my two wins. Okay, so my two wins, uh, my business win, uh, we did a content day on Tuesday. So Spencer, myself, and Kyle went and visited uh, all of our properties in the southern Utah area. So we just did like, it's about a three-hour loop um, heading north and then going through Zion and then back around the back way. And we stopped at, let's see, dwellings, bungalows, greater Zion e-bikes, watchman villas. Uh, Canyon Casitas, Canyon Casitas, Flanagan's, Cliff Rose, Anthera, Five Petals, Canyons, Canyons, Canyons. Water Canyon Properties, Water Canyon, Water Canyon, Water Canyon, Gooseberry. Went to 15 properties that day. (laughs) (laughs) No wonder it took so long. (laughs) I I was drained by the end of that day. Oh, yeah. I was telling Kayla, I was like, man, like we were having the best time ever. And then on the way home from Canab, we were just dead. Oh, yeah. We left out Wildflower. (laughs) Oh, Wildflower. Uh, Yep. 16. We, uh, I like when so we went to Wildflower. They've got this amazing like grass area in the middle of their complex, and they've got ping pong tables and fire pits. And so we threw the pigskin around a little bit, and we were just like, "This is the greatest day ever! Like this is yeah. so fun." And then on the way home, about twelve hours later, we're like, "Ah, <laughs> <laughs> no more." We went through some horseshoes at Gooseberry Lodges. Yeah, that was fun. It was fun, but we're like, "Oh, I'm tired." So tired, but yeah, it was it great. Be... So good to see all the properties. Fun to hang out with you and Kyle, obviously. That was cool, and we got a bunch of great content it was a, it was a really great day really enjoyed it and then for personal i um obviously if you've listened to this enough i've probably talked about some of my individual aspirations with my book winning the moment and i did a keynote at utah tech university uh back in may and i finally got the video of it so i didn't get to see myself obviously yeah right you know and so i thought i did amazing then watching it back it's like oh shoot i, I had a lot of opportunities to improve but i've got this business coach michael alasso who we met because of Craig Andrews at a tab yep. event, which, and he is just amazing, this amazing, amazing speaker. And so I got to do my coaching call with him yesterday and we watched my keynote together and then paused it. And he gave me, you know, all the feedback that I needed. And Michael's great at like not holding anything back and really telling you, right. like, you look like an idiot right here. What are you doing? You know, like that's not <laughs> what we talked about, but did say at the 
end, you know, way, way, way above average for your first talk. And so that was just really cool to get that feedback uh, and know that I'm on like I'm on the trajectory that I want to be on. Totally. And then he um, said there's an event in San Diego for authors that he's going to recommend me to. And so that was really cool. Nice. That was like the idea of doing that with him is yeah. getting to a place that I can really do it, you know. So that was fun. So then that takes us out of our segue. And what I'd love to do is just talk more about Hotels As. Mallory's got it pulled up right here. Do you, yeah. do you scroll to the top, Mallory? I do want to talk the backstory on this a little bit. Since yeah, you're... this is really amazing. So uh, the Hotel Zaz, and if you'll just click on menu and then get us back to the homepage out of the gallery. So the Hotel Zaz is owned by Charmine. Um, and I would try and attempt her last name. I'm just not great at pronouncing it. So sure. um, Charmaine is awesome. She has a really unique background. She actually grew up in this hotel. Her parents are immigrants. They bought this hotel, lived in it. Uh, they, they actually had a hotel in a, I'm probably going to get the story wrong, but I think it was like a roadside motel that they lived in. So like their Christmases were kind of similar to Brex, right? Like yeah. check in, check out, <clears throat> serving breakfast. Yeah. Right. Then they bought this one, moved into this. She later on ended up becoming a surgeon and which is incredible which is so amazing so left hospitality became a surgeon and then went back into hospitality bought this same hotel that she grew up in and what uh she calls it she zazified it yeah. and the kind of the cool story <laughs> is that they were talking about this hotel and they just bought it and uh she used the word like i want to uh, you know pizzazz it or give it some yeah. pizzazz right uh -huh. and then her daughter was like what does zazz mean like what, like, oh, wow. She could that's, only pick up awesome. like, the word pizzazz. pizzazz yeah, because her daughter's right? young. She's like two or something. Yeah, I think she was two at the time. Yeah. yeah. So just out of a, a tribute called to the Hotel Zaz. Man, that's so cool. And it really has become amazing. So she has uh, been open for the past six months and it's actually won a ton of awards. So it won uh, a couple of awards from Forbes. Um, I th they might actually be on here. On the footer, it's got the Forbes thing. As oh, does it? Forbes. Yeah, which is uh, really cool. If you cool. click on menu, and just... that's a, I mean, that's a hard thing to do to oh, get your yeah. property highlighted in Forbes is a is a very right very down, challenging thing to do. Down at the bottom, as seen on Forbes. Oh, and then maybe press oh, coverages like too. Click. Oh yeah, maybe click on pr uh, press coverages, Mallory. Uh, yep. Oh, nope. Yep. yep, we got it. Let's see what's on here. Triple A magazine, news station, paper. The paper is a huge magazine. Oh, Mrs. Really? World Traveler, Scottsdale Standard. I mean, they're really making their way through. Um, These are huge visitors. Which is incredible the because These are she awesome. created it. You know, it's not a brand. Oh, look it's at this. TripAdvisor, top 10 trending winter destinations for the U.S. travelers. And then this is a great picture because this really shows you the whole property. Yeah, that and is what's an so amazing cool about picture. that is if you look at that, there are thousands of hotels that have that same shell yep. all across America, right? right? That used to be a travel lodge or a Best Western or a Days yep. Inn or something like that. And no one wants to stay there. But she took that no shell one. and made it just absolutely incredible. It's really funny. We had a call with her yesterday talking about future projects. And we had a property here in St. George that has a similar shell like that, that we really wanted to purchase. Yeah, right. And we wanted to, and honestly, like our colors would have been very similar. Like the whole vibe was the same. Yep. Uh, and we were going to call it the vibe, which is hilarious. And she said that that was like one of her yeah, final wasn't that names. in the mix? Uh -huh, it yeah. was in the mix for her property. And we ultimately wanted to do almost the same thing. And there's a property in Boston called The Verb. Oh, yeah. And The Verb was like some of our inspiration for what we wanted to do. And she had that same inspiration at hers. And she just told us that guy... Fieri, is that how you say it? Yeah, I don't know how to say it. Fieri, Fieri. Guy Fieri the guy know. with the hair that's yeah. on fire that does like food and food stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he had just stayed there with his like his team doing something like his whole production crew, and someone on his staff told her like this is reminds me of the Verb oh, in yeah. Boston, but cooler. Yep. Which is a huge accomplishment. So that is it's, amazing. It's really cool to align. Um, with someone like that who has the same aspirations and goals and, and views hospitality in the same way for sure and can see what would have been just a typical box hotel and said, yeah. I'm going to make this amazing. Yeah. This could have easily been a super eight or uh, anything like that. Right. Oh yeah. Um, if anyone wants to see a great, great demonstration of brand application, this is it. Oh yeah. Go to gallery really quick, Mallory. Oh, there's Charmaine right there. Because I want to show some of like their lobby. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Hit I mean, play on this. See, and they, they invested in good video too. 
You got the drone and everything. Look the at way it. that it stands out is just incredible. What they did, the Porcashare, their colors, that tree, and that's Charmaine. Charmaine right there. Yeah. Look at the tree above her too and that wall. Wow. And it just knocked it out. Not many people have the vision to take a shell like that and turn it into something like this. No, absolutely not. Uh, it's actually cool because this is on the arts arts district portion of Route 66 in Albuquerque. It's like right down the way is like brew pubs, galleries, a lot of really cool nightlife. And this fits in perfect. In fact, it's I think Charmaine was saying it's like the only place. Look, it's got a movie theater, two movie Yeah, and look how cool that pool. walkway is to the pool. If you're watching this pod, or if, excuse me, if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple, I would definitely encourage you to switch over to YouTube and just check this out or go to hotelsaz.com at some point because this really is just an amazing, like there's an Instagram spot right there. Yeah. They and how smart, it. right? That is literally Brilliant. beneath beneath the stairs. They boxed so in the smart. spot, put a swing, put turf on the wall. Like she really did such a, a great job. I think it's such a good example of what hospitality can be. Yeah. We and really should have her on um, to share that story. Yeah, she's going to plan on it. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so anyone looking for an idea of of what a really strong independent brand can look like, this is a, a very franchisable brand as well. So you could duplicate it, copy and paste, yeah. make more of these. Um, you could even do it in different capacities too. And then brand application. In fact, I just found last night, I've just been going crazy packing and I found that yellow hoodie that, oh, our vibrant one. Yeah, yeah. That we wore on the way to yeah. Florida. And I was like, this is a, it just reminded me of the brand application. Yeah. But this is such a gr great example of brand application. I oh, think. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she did a phenomenal job. Knocked it out of the park. Um, something else I just realized that I want to talk about because we hadn't yet. Um, our content trip with Desert Solitude. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So we've got this amazing client. Um, his name's Neil and he's got a luxury uh touring company called desert solitude so he goes out and does like high-end glamping um which glamping and, and camping isn't really my thing <laughs> but we needed to get content for him because we do all of his marketing and this is not something that we've ever done before Never. Um, and so it was like a re and we're not professional photographers we like kyle and i only had our cell phones um neil wanted to get some drone footage but we don't have a drone because we're not you know, professional content yeah, creators. Right. Drones are expensive. But Kyle found this. Um, he had like this pole to get like like a cobwebs. pole or something. Yeah, to get like cobwebs and like a vaulted <laughs> ceiling house. So it was like this it could go to 16 feet and it had like a duster on the top. Cool. He took the duster off it, attached his GoPro to it. And so when you see the footage, it's going to blow your mind. And what was so genius about it is you can't have drones in national parks anyways. Right. When we were in Arches and Candyland, so you couldn't have had a, a drone. That's brilliant. But we're just following Neil in my truck with a 16-foot duster <laughs> <laughs> and a GoPro attached to it. And the footage is oh. honestly incredible. And so we went – so he set us up right outside of the um, entrance to Arches National Park on like this BLM land, like into the back door of Arches, which I didn't yeah, know existed. Right. So, uh, so I brought my wife and my kids. We get there. Uh, we do a tour of the RV, which is amazing. Like it is, it is a full luxury RV, and I didn't really know what to expect, right? Yeah. On this whole thing. Yep. So we jump in. He's got this custom suburban that's amazing. He's got all your drinks, all your snacks. He's got iPads for the kids. Like it's incredible. We hop on this dirt road, go into the back entrance of Arches, which was unbelievable. Who even knew that existed? I didn't. Didn't have to wait in line. Didn't have to do any of that stuff. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. the downside of Arches. Yeah. It's the line. Incredible, dude. Yeah. We just bypassed all of it. Sweet. And then get to this lunch spot where Balance Rock is. And he pulls out a grill and he makes us steak kebabs as we sit on nice. this picnic table looking at Balance Rock. And it was like, oh, this, Sweet. this is amazing, you know? Yeah. And it's incredible what the iPhones can do because the content we got was truly like you'll have to go to Desert Solitude and follow because the content. I couldn't you believe. You should pull that up now. Are you, are you logged into Instagram on on the computer? Because if you are. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see it. Oh, okay. Never that's Never right. Mind. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so <clears throat> we have this lunch at Balance Rock. Then we go and do all these tours. And he just knew so much about it. And so my kids are just like taking it all in, you know, just yeah. absolutely loving it. And he understood how to like navigate the crowds. Yep. And so as you look at our footage, so many of the experiences we like experience with just us, because he'd be like, just wait a minute. Let me tell you guys the story. And then like the crowds would come in and they would leave and then we would go. Yeah. But it never felt like we were waiting for anything because he would right. just like he showed us how to knock on the sandstone and find hollow spots because like the water runs through the rock. And so oh. there's different parts on the rock. You can knock on it and hear that it's hollow, which was really cool. 
That's amazing. And I didn't know Arches has like 2,000 arches in it. I oh, never yeah, knew it's that. Got a ton. So that was really cool. And so he told us that story. So we experienced so much of this, um, what felt to be like just us, you yep. know? And then we went back and had this amazing dinner. We cooked um, chili dogs on the fire and they cooked chili on a Dutch oven that hung above the fire. Oh, and, like, cool. My kids have never cooked their food on a fire before. Never, but they'll, never, they'll always remember that. I guess neither have I, probably, if I think about it. I don't know that I've ever done that either. But so that was really cool. And then the next day we went to Canyonlands and then went on this amazing adventure through like sand dunes and 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 these these really tiny caves and drove under rocks and just all this stuff that cool. was way outside of my comfort zone that yeah. i would have never done did you take your truck through that yeah yep so everything that neil did and on the second that? day did, terrifying <laughs> we got to this one part we like pulls over and it's like all these like sand dune like uh mountains and hills and dunes or whatever and he's like okay this isn't actually part of the tour but since it's you let's have some fun He's like, follow me. And he like mobs up this thing. And I'm like, and Neil's got like a crawl. I get him on the radio and I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not, <laughs> that's not, that doesn't actually sound fun to me. He's like, no, no, you're doing it. I was like, no, like really I'm not. And he's like, okay, I'm going to get out of my car and I'm going to help you. So he gets out and stands there, tells me what to put my car. And I guess there's this feature on my truck. I didn't even know that happened. When I put it in four wheel, I can like pull this thing out and then it locks my back tires. Oh, what? Yeah, it's really cool. I wonder if mine does that. Uh, well, I'll look in your yeah, truck yeah. and tell you. And so then I do that. And so I'm climbing. I did all these things I've never done before. It taught me how to do donuts in the sand. And like we really mobbed down these crazy sand dunes to this cool, uh, it's called T- Tuncture Tunnel. So just this amazing experience. Like the breakfast that they made us was world class. And we just ate it right outside our trailer with a view of the rocks. And yeah. he parked us right by this huge rock. Um, like mountain that our kids could go climb on their own. Nice. And like, that was our favorite part. Cause they like got to be free and explore. And they made us the steak dinner the second night. That was honestly one of the best meals they've ever had. And they're doing it all right there at your campsite. So it was awesome wow. because I told Neil like, wow, I so much more understand your offering than I ever could have otherwise. Like it sounded cool and everything, but until right. you experience it, you just cannot appreciate how incredible it is. And then for us as a company, I realized like, wow, this is an offering we could do. Yeah. You know, like we could invest really the only thing that we needed because the pole works so good, almost better than a drone because of the the restrictions of drone tr- flights, right? Yep. If we just had one of those really nice cameras, which I think, well, how much did Kyle say that was to get the camera? You it was wanted? like 1200 bucks, 1200 bucks, yeah. somewhere like that. And so one of those, one job pays for it. Yep. And after seeing the content, so I think between me, Kyle and Emery, we probably got north of 700 pieces of content kyle said he had just 700 alone on yeah. his phone so some of that might be for some desolation of that was for now. desolation too oh you, you probably talk a little bit about that yeah that might need to be like its own segue yeah. we're, <laughs> we're going deep down the squirrels again um so yeah that was that was amazing so now i know like wow what a cool thing for us as a management company i never would have had the confidence to say that we could um do this ourselves but after seeing what we produced it's like wow this can actually be an offering and it's something yeah. that so many people need because just pe- just our clients just like neil they don't have the content because yep. like neil said i can't i can't be taking pictures of like these people who paid 30 grand to go in on this trip and being like hey can i yeah. come to the trailer while you get in your pajamas and like film you you know <laughs> that's or, never gonna work or yeah. even while they're eating you know yeah. like you don't want them to feel awkward because they've paid all this money for this luxury experience and certainly neil can never get footage of himself yep or driving it or the outside of his vehicle or any of that stuff. And so, so it was what, what really was the cool. takeaway for you? Like if you're, if you're Neil operating this Utah or if you're operating this luxury tour based company, right? Yeah. Or if you're a, a hotel owner, all the same and you don't have any content, what would your advice be? You have to get it because the reason I didn't understand what Neil did is because I couldn't see it. Right. He told me about it and we'd be like, that's cool. Yeah. Right. Sounds cool. Right. You know, like if someone told you the Grand Canyon's cool, is it the same as seeing it? No, of course not. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yep. Like I can explain the Grand Canyon in the best of detail that I possibly can, but unless you see it, you just don't really know what I'm saying, you so, know? So what you're saying is that you have to grow with video. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty si- – I'd just press record at least <laughs> at, at a minimum. <laughs> but really invest in yeah. video, invest in content because I think now – and I told Neil this, I said, what we will be able to do for you from a marketing standpoint is so elevated because now we can actually show people like they no longer totally. have to just take your word for it. Right. You can actually say, 
go watch this. It'll, it'll well, show you and everyone's expect. seen the national park, right? But it's right. a whole experience inside the national park. Yeah. Like if you see the video of Neil guiding my family to an arch and there's literally no one else in the image except for them. Yep. And that wasn't like a, we didn't wait there for an hour to do that. Like that organically happened totally just naturally through the tour. And so yeah. I think when you see that, and you understand what he really did. And like the food, I thought, because he's like, we'll have a picnic in the park. I thought would be like sandwiches or something. Yeah. And he pulls out a grill and is cooking a steak kebab. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, this is incredible. Like, you know? Whoa. Yeah. I think the one big takeaway is we talked about in a previous episode how the destination can't be the hero. It's yeah. the experience that has right. to be the hero. Yeah. Right. And he totally delivered on that. Yeah. Because just selling trips to Arches National Park is the same thing that the hoodoo is doing. Right. Or everyone else in Moab. Exactly. Right. No different than the Comfort Inn and Suites in Moab, the Hoodoo. It's all the same. But what he provides is a high end experience in the park. Right. Oh, yeah. And what's funny about that, too, is I had actually booked a night at the Hoodoo because oh, I was yeah. like, OK, after this, I'll let my kids go to the hotel and have that experience. Yep. And then the trip was so incredible that we're like, oh, we don't even need to do that. We just came home after. And the Hoodoo's dope, too. The Hoodoo's amazing hotel. Yeah. Yeah, the Hoodoo is amazing. Yeah, I think that is the big takeaway is make your experience, your asset, whatever it is. If you're a tour company, if you're a hotel, whatever, you've got to make that the hero. Yeah, and what's amazing, too, about what Neil did is the second day, we only did one lookout in Canyonlands. So we were in Canyonlands for like 30 minutes. Right. The rest of the day was just out there. Like we weren't even in the national parks, you know, and yeah. and had just the most amazing adventures. I've You're ever just been like on. BLM land or something. I guess I don't even know where we were. I mean, we literally cool. were like climbing down mountains in our vehicles in the Sweet. middle of nowhere. It was. I think I have. I just got to show you this one because it's just so good. This was so Neil had gone and already done like climb down this mountain, and so I was up top getting footage, and then Megan said, "Okay, you can head down now." Like, look how epic this is. Oh, what? This isn't in Canyonlands? No, this is not inside of any kind of park boundary. I want to go there. Oh, it was amazing. I mean, how epic is that? Dude, we might need to do a vibrant retreat. Oh, yeah, it was it was something else. I mean, like, this is right up at the top. What? Um, that was at the top of it, like, where we went down. That's not inside of a park. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Parks are a whole nother discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it should be or not. Yeah, right. right. If it wasn't in Utah, it would be in that obviously would be a national park. Yeah. Remember, Just you can't have seven s- national parks in Moab. Because <laughs> they uh, they got rid of Bears Ear. <laughs> they yeah, they did whatever they do to it. Well, I don't know what happened to that, but R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we should get into the conferences discussion. Oh yeah. So we've got some hospitality news. So we've got a list of six conferences that are coming up that we feel like are good ones to go to. Yep. Um, the very first one, as far as time goes, is uh, this month. It is High Tech, which is produced by Bytech, right? No, it's actually something totally different. Oh, no way. Yeah. So there's Just similar names. Bytech, and then this is High Tech, T-E-C. Tech. Tech. Got yeah. it. I thought it was the same, too, when Nick brought it up to us yeah. at Bytech. Yeah. And then I, I looked, and it's two very different things. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Which I know that that is like, I think that one and the hospitality show, which is in Vegas from the 27th to the 29th, I believe are two of the biggest shows of the year. Correct. And so, unfortunate that they opted to put those at the same time. I almost so, wonder if that's like the smart idea, though. This is like the strategy. Make them choose one. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, you put the Starbucks next to the Dutch Bros, right? Yeah. Like, make them choose. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So High Tech is the 26th to the 29th in Toronto. Yep. Uh, the Hospitality Show is the 27th through the 29th in Las Vegas. Uh, myself, Spencer, Kyle, and Breck will be at that one. So if you're going to the Hospitality Show, reach out. So many people already have, but uh, we certainly look forward to networking and being with everyone um, the next show that's coming up time wise is the Miami Hospitality Expo. Obviously in Miami. It's in the name. <laughs> that is July eleventh through the thirteenth. That's not one that we've ever been to before. Nope. Um, but it seems to be really good. I think comes highly recommended. I think Cougar Ridge may have went to that one in the past. I know oh, that cool. Brian at Utah Luxury Tours has gone to that show before. Nice. Um, the next one is ILTM. Uh, this is September 18th through the 21st in the Bahamas. Uh, Breck and I went to ILTM Asia. You should say what that acronym is. In an international luxury travel market. So that is for high-end luxury travel properties. So Breck and I went to Singapore in 2019, which is kind of unfortunate timing because we went to try and get 
Asian people to come to our properties right before it became impossible to come to our properties. So that the timing is terrible. That didn't pencil too well. <laughs> no, uh, but it was an absolutely incredible event. So we went and represented ourselves, as in the Cliff Rose. Yep. Uh, we represented Cougar Ridge, Zion Mountain Ranch, and Sorrel River Ranch in Moab. So we kind of did like a collective of all four because. The, the price to attend that was outside of our reach. Yeah. So we did a collaborative effort with all four of us individually marketing each one. And then also we put together a five and six, which was visit all five national parks in six days and stay at these properties along the way. Nice. So that was really cool. Awesome. If you're in that luxury travel space, that's one I highly recommend. We really, really enjoyed it. And we did get a lot out of it, even though we got uh, hit with some obstacles. Um, the next one is you look this one up. I H show Miami beach. What was that for? Yeah. This is the independent hotel show. That's obviously what this podcast is designed for. That is Miami beach convention center. It is September 20th to the 21st of this year. Um, you can still register on their website, independent hotel show.us. And, uh, I was just looking through this website. This one is new to us. Uh, I don't, it seems like it's a pretty tenured conference, but there's really great exhibitor opportunities, and it seems like there's some pretty awesome breakout sessions. Uh, so we're definitely going to have to. Oh, they actually they have one in London and Amsterdam too. And uh, later are, this year, <clears throat> when are we going to Bytex? What are those dates? The Bytex Independent is August sixth to the eighth. Yeah, that sounds right. I believe that's correct. Um, so if you want, to, I think they're still accepting registrations for that too. So uh, the Bytex Independent would be a really good one to go to. Uh, this independent hotel show, there's one in London, the 16th to the 17th of October this year, and then another one in Amsterdam, the 12th through the 13th in uh, 2024 in March. I should probably go to Amsterdam. I, think I don't want to, but just because it's like our duty. I think we do have an obligation. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> you got to give the people what they want. They want us in Amsterdam. I We have received a large amount of inquiries <laughs> from Amsterdam. A lot of downloads. <laughs> <laughs> um, a surprising okay. amount so the last one is a local one for here in utah if you're in utah obviously you can come if you're outside of utah but certainly if you're here you're going to want to come it's worth coming if you're outside yeah. of utah as well especially yeah, because if you're the a drive princi- market the principles of what they're talking about and teaching and informing you on are true everywhere right so and utah just happens to do it very well yeah absolutely so that is the utah tourism conference that is september 26th through the 29th and that is right here in our hometown of st george utah so we'll certainly be there be a part of that uh, and we if you're in the state and you're in hospitality you have absolutely no reason to not sign up for that so make sure you go in and register today i think there's still early bird registration right now it just there? ended oh ended did it the beginning of the, i think it may be still be less now though than got it as you get even closer but. yeah we're hoping i i'm not going to jump the gun too much but we're hoping to be involved in a bigger way this year. Um, I think you know what I'm referencing. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that, but we would love to see anyone there. Uh, so those are Adam, if you're listening, we're coming for you, bro. (laughs) Check yourself. You didn't let me podcast with you last year. Yeah. Or me, you created a monster. Yeah. Now we're going to get you. Um, okay. So then the next thing we want to talk about, do you want to take the, take the wheels on that one? Yeah. Talking about blueprint online management first. Oh, the ideas that we talked about. Yeah. You're talking about these. Oh yeah, you're. Oh nope. I was in my mind. I was thinking we're going to talk about online management today. How important it is to make sure that you're represented adequately in all of your online platforms. Hmm. Well, that's interesting because I actually had this written down. Oh yeah, I've got that too. That was going to be our ending. Hmm. So we'll just do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we fly by the seat of our pants here. Um, the online management thing was the thing that Chat GPT said to do. Oh, that was just the title. Yeah. Is that going to be today's title? Yes. So we should probably talk about it. <laughs> right? Yes. So what we're talking about, once you read what ChatGPT said, we should talk about. So Spencer actually did a really brilliant thing uh, because what matters is what we like the SEO of the podcast and how people find us. Right. And right. so Spencer being the smart and savvy individual that he is decided, well, why am I going to do all this work? I'll just ask chat GPT. It has all the answers. And so you, what was the question you asked it? So obviously, like Cody said, trying to get found by more hoteliers, I asked chat GPT, what are common Google searches by hotel owners or GMs? And if you missed it, we actually just published a podcast uh, several weeks ago about how to use chat GPT at your hotel. So go back and look at that. They actually just made a really excellent phone app too. 
So oh, that's cool. I it, didn't know that. It's amazing. Uh, and it even has like a great voice dictation, so you don't have to type it. Like you can give it really specific information. Making it easier and easier for us. Gosh, pretty soon it'll just be like you just put your phone right here and you just think it. Pretty, It's getting pretty <laughs> close to that, man. Once Neuralink goes live, that's going to be what happens. <laughs> get, imagine a, Neuro, a Neuralink GPT Oh my. Oh, could you imagine you go on Jeopardy and just slay the day? Oh, you destroy. You'd actually become superhuman at that point. Become a computer. Yeah. Uh, so ChatGPT basically was like, here's all the data. And I it only gave me 10 so I could ask it for more. But some that we hadn't talked about, which uh, was the one that I brought up today, would be staff training and development in hotels. So that's one that we definitely want to talk about. Um, but then there was hotel management software, revenue management strategies, online reputation management, hotel marketing strategies. We've done a lot of these, right? Hotel industry trends, hospitality industry conferences and events, uh, which we'll continue to talk about, hotel safety, uh, sustainable hotel practices, staff training development, and hotel renovation and refurbishment tips. Yeah, so we've hit on a bunch of those and want to hit on the few that we didn't. Loads. The one that was online management, we already talked a lot about TripAdvisor, but we thought let's just throw a couple other things out there today. Yeah. Um, and so you've got obviously your TripAdvisor. That's important. Yep. Uh, but your Google reviews are also incredibly important and responding to those reviews. I think, and I think we talked about this before, but you've got to respond, good, bad, or indifferent, no matter you what totally the review says. Always. You've got to have a response. So if, if you're not doing that, you want to make sure that you do. Um, we talked a little bit, I think in a previous episode about Google hotel ads uh-huh. and how think had that. And now we're able to do that with web res. One of our properties, the chuck wagon, we just turned those on and we haven't yet put a spend to it. It's just literally a feature. It's just live. Yep. And, and at this point we don't even know if it needs a spend. Yeah. It has, they have gotten 17 Google ads reservations since the beginning of the month. So that with today's the 16th, that means they're averaging more than one reservation a day from having that Google just ads turned from turning on. That on. And if yeah. you go and onto Google and you search Chuck Wagon Lodge Tory, you'll see it. And what's awesome is that we are the best price on there. So when a consumer right. is looking at all those OTAs, and there's ones I've never even heard of, there's like 20 on there. Yeah, there's you know? a ton of OTAs. And it shows us the best. So certainly there, um, you're going to want your Instagram. Like if you look at Hotel Zaz, for example, and you see this website, and then you go to their Instagram. Right. It's that's the same thing. Their Instagram is phenomenal. Yep. It's even tiled out perfectly. Oh yeah, it's really really well done. Yeah, it's it's perfectly executed. Um all of their online reputation is perfectly dialed too and having that Forbes reputation is a huge uh, Oh yeah. Big it, driver. This is like the technicality of a website but it's called a backlink. And so oh, a, yeah, a big authority like Forbes that is referencing your website from their website automatically is a huge credibility booster. Yep. So if you have like a, a great way, a good example of this would be like, if you have like a health coach or someone that you follow online that is like a nutrition specialist and they come out one day and they're like, stop eating grapefruits, no more grapefruits. You're going to be like, okay, no more grapefruits, right? Because it's someone of interest yeah. recommending something. It's the exact same way online. So the more of these high domain authority backlinks you can accumulate, yep. the more likely you are that you're going to rank. And this is kind of like an under the radar SEO tactic, but organically getting it from Forbes is almost unheard of. Oh yeah. The value of that backlink is unreal. Unreal. Right. Because then what that's telling Google is this website's for real. Exactly. Because hotels as can never have the digital strength of a Forbes, but never. by Forbes recommending you, it's just like when, like what you said, if your best friend says, go to this restaurant, you're going to be like, Oh yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's Google saying, Oh, Forbes recommends this. They're legit. And then you've got your Airbnbs and your booking.com and your, and your Expedia's. And you want to make sure your yep. imagery on that matches. Like, especially if you've done totally. a renovation in the past, whatever amount of time, you don't want your pictures on those OTAs to be your old Yep. Rooms. You want it to represent what the guests are going to get today. And even having credibility badges. So two that I just thought of would be the TripAdvisor review that like the dwellings just won. Yeah. Yeah. But those um, top Canyons 10% of too. hotels in the world, right? Yep. It was an, a really amazing r- r- award. Will and you, then, um, Mallory, go to the dwellings.co? Cause I'll show how we put that on our website. One more that I was going to reference to just, you brought up Airbnb in a previous episode that I shot by myself. I had made a video about the three ways that you become an Airbnb super host. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. Super important. Yep. So go back and watch that. I can't remember when I published that. I think that was earlier last yeah, year. Yeah, that would have been like 
more towards the beginning. Yeah. So on the dwellings website, if you're listening and not watching, go to the dwellings.co and you'll see TripAdvisor allowed us to add that to the bottom of the oh, site. Oh, that's cool. I didn't that even see that. It says Traveler's one. Choice Winner 2023. And that just follows you anywhere you go on the site, which that is like the best recommendation you can have right on your site. So if they totally. haven't yet gone to TripAdvisor and they somehow organically just made it to us, it's instantly qualifying the guests, letting them know like, were a property you want to stay at, which is unbelievably valuable. Yeah, and then huge. if you, as, as Mallory's scrolling the site, you'll see like we've always updated it, right? So like this picture, we originally stopped right here, Mal. So we originally had a stock image of a dog here, which was great. It was a great image. But now we've got dogs that are actually on property. So if you see this parallax and you these are your, your pets, dogs and these happen to be my dogs as puppies. Yep. That's Bronco and Fox. But if you go there with your dogs now, you're going to see that exact same decking in those chairs. And so you know, like, wow, this really is the experience. And if you scroll up, Mal, and just go, like, up to the top, that parallax, oh, sorry, go down a little bit to the next image that's, like, between them all. Keep going. Uh, this okay. right there, that is a brand new unit. So these two units that you see in picture right here were added last year. And so, again, you can see the updates that we've done Um and we always try and bootstrap our marketing efforts. That's actually my dad sitting on that chair. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, that looks like Phil. Um, but that's what you have to do, right? So because originally these units didn't exist, but we wanted to make sure the website is really showing you <laughs> that's his Corvette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just so important that your website truly is telling your digital story and it should evolve with you as your property evolves. As things get added and yeah. changed and there's new things to do. You want to make sure that the website is accurately reflecting that. And it has to stay current too. Like that's why we send Kyle to our properties once a month yeah. because as the seasons change, yep. snow leaves, leaves change, whatever, right? We want it to show what the current condition of the property is. You can recycle content. There's no problem with that. But having organic content that actually shows the experience is a big win. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So then that will take us into, we wanted to talk about um, staff training and management today. And we have this great connection. Uh, he is actually from Scottsdale, but his name is Brad Anderson. And he is a part of Blueprint Creations. And he has just a plethora of hospitality experience. And one of the best trainers that I've ever experienced, at least in this venue, um, he t was, I think, a guest at a tourism conference. And we met him like, man, this guy's amazing. We had him come and be a breakout session for the Southern Utah Tourism Summit in Cedar City. Uh, and have then had him come to our properties and train our staff for, for years, really. Yeah. All of our virtual GMs have been through his trainings. He'll work with like the DMOs and, and do a training where everyone can just come and attend for the day. And he is doing a training for Abercrombie and Kent, uh, which is an awesome, awesome travel uh, company at Cougar Ridge and Torrey at the end of the year. So it made us think like, hey, oh yeah, we should probably um, – like take advantage of that and have him do trainings with our properties out there. And so he does this mystery calling service as well. So after like mystery he, shopping, mystery, exact same thing. Yep. So after he does this training, then you can set up and get like five calls a month where him and his team will call and, and pretend to be making reservations and they record those calls so you can hear the transaction. Yep. And so he asked our permission to be able to do a couple of those with some of our properties up there in Tory. And it was really eye opening because we all think all of us in this room and people who are listening, you believe your staff is doing a great job always, right? Yep. Generally, that's the disposition. You think like, oh, they're doing a good job. Well, we got to listen to a couple of recordings and found some real opportunities in that. Some One, big opportunities. That, like taking over 30 seconds to answer, not answering at all, because Brad had to call a bunch of times and had oh, difficulty wow. even getting through. People to answer, yeah. Yep. And then on one, and we won't talk about the property or the person, but right. one property um, on the call they asked, you know, is it cheaper to book with you or online? Which is a question that many guests answer. All the time. And, They're just rate shopping. Right. And this particular um, associate said, oh, yeah, it's probably cheaper if you go on TripAdvisor, or I'm sorry, on Expedia or Booking.com. So had a customer we were mind blown when we heard willing that. to book and told that customer, actually, you're going to want to go book. Go book on an OTA. Somewhere else. Yeah. You know, which is really painful. After an optimized website, something that All goes. Of, right to a direct booking link right. that doesn't take any percent. And, and so that's, that's what's just... so hard. Cause if you're that hotel owner, right. And you're not actively in the front desk, you just own the property and you've got a team of people you're counting on. Yeah. That call costs you 18%. Exactly. Yeah. And then we're, and it's more than that really, because if you think about now the in this particular person, sense, yeah. that was a mystery call, but let's say it was an actual customer. Well, odds are our marketing dollars 
drove them to your website. Right. So you're, there's the spend you have for us as a management company. There's the, our social media that they may have vetted beforehand. Yep. Right? There's the spend of building a website that yep. is capable of driving direct bookings. Yep. So you've got our cost. You've got that cost. You've got your marketing dollar spend because who knows how much money you spent on marketing to get them to your that site. Person there. And yep. then we're also, we're purposely trying to drive phone calls through our marketing efforts. Yep. So they could have went through five cost funnels to get that direct booking. Totally. Only to then be directed to another source of which you have to pay 18% commission to. So let's talk about if I called you and you answered the phone yeah, and I asked you, is it cheaper to book with you or online or is it cheaper to book? Sure. Right. Yeah. What, what's your response? My response would be, oh, absolutely not. Your best rate is always going to be booking directly with us. However, if for some reason you're able to find a rate that is cheaper than what we're offering you, we'll absolutely beat that. I don't anticipate that to be because we try and ensure that all of our guests get the best benefit by booking directly. But if you can find a rate that's cheaper than what we have, we'll match and beat that. And also, I'd, most of our properties have a length of stay promotion. Yep. So I'd probably bring that up. I'd, I'd vet them, ask them more questions, find out what they're staying, who they're right. coming with, what they plan to do. How long are you Because no one ever books for long enough, right? Because yeah. they might be coming and be like, oh, we're going to go to – let's let's keep it in Tory. We're going to go to Capitol Reef and Goblin Valley. Yep. We're going to stay one night. It's like you're not going to want to do know, that. That's, that's, that's not – That's a three-night stay. Correct. You know? Yep. And so – Unless you're I, just going to drive through Capitol Reef and ooh and ah. And not and then, go, yeah, yeah exactly. that's the only way, that right? only way. And that's a terrible way to see. Yeah, not life. don't come all the way there and just drive through yeah, it. Right. So then I'm going to be able to qualify what it is that they're looking for. Then I'm going to be able to add our length of stay promotion. Yep. By staying that third night, they're going to get a 25% discount. And at that point, you'll never find a better rate than that. Right. So now I'm getting Never. potentially two additional nights. I'm keeping and, – and it's not just about revenue either, right? Because let's say they book two nights on booking.com versus three nights with us. Our net – return may be the same, yep. but the difference is that's not our customer. Yep. So if they book directly with us, now they're our customer. I get to repurpose and re market to them in the future. With the data right? to get their email, their name, their phone number, we can put you in our email campaign. And the relationship is now with us. We can remarket to you on, on yep. Facebook ads, right? I mean, it's so much better. And the relationship, just like you said. And if I do get that third night, then even though the, the net net may be the same, the difference is every additional stay is so much more profitable, yep. right? Because if I sold them, if they got two nights in Expedia and a different guest got that third night, yep. well, now my housekeepers have had to clean that room twice versus once, and then my profitability is gone. So yep. it's so important to be driving those direct bookings. But so that made us think, let's give you the four signs that your staff need more training and Spencer will get, get us kicked off with the first one. Yeah, so uh, here's the top four. Number one is not responding to any reviews. Uh, this is really important. In fact, uh, not on our last episode, but the one before that, we talked about the importance of replying to TripAdvisor reviews. But just on the same note of online reputation management, you need to reply to basically everything. So TripAdvisor, yep. Instagram comments, Google reviews, Airbnb, Airbnb Expedia comments, yeah, anything <clears throat> where people are engaging with you, there needs to be some type of response. Even if it's a positive response, like if someone leaves a five-star review, you should go out of your way to say thank you for the feedback. And even if that's just a copy and paste something that is in a Google Doc that you say, thank you for the five-star review. We hope you enjoyed your stay. And then use this code for- 50%. Or use ChatGPT, put the customer's review in ChatGPT and say, help me write a review for this. <laughs> that's also true too. In fact, there is an integration now between ChatGPT and review softwares that will just do it for you. Wow. Yeah. Man, pretty soon we're not going to do anything. It's getting close. Pretty soon, Chat GPT will just record our podcast for us. Yep. Uh, find, <laughs> find someone to do this. Hire a virtual assistant yeah. in the Philippines for four bucks an hour. For four dollars an hour, and just give them the credentials to your OTAs or wherever you have any engagement. Yeah. And just have them reply. Yep. And train them for several hours and show them yeah. these are this is what you say in these situations and just do that. Yep. That's the fastest way to to mitigate. So that important problem. to respond because then guests see that and they're like, wow, yep. this hotel is like actively involved. Killing it. You know, yep. good, bad, or indifferent. Exactly. So number two is if OTAs represent more than fifteen percent of your bookings, then there's probably an opportunity with your staff, right? And that we just talked about that call. That's a perfect example. And and that could be not just your staff, but also potentially your management company mm -hmm. if you have one. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately if you're doing all the right things and you're driving traffic to the appropriate funnels, you should be able to be less than 15% of your OTAs. So if you're not, there's an opportunity there. And if you find your property that has a higher percentage of OTAs than 15%, I'd say reach out to Spencer and let us fix that for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've talked to several properties that are between 50 and 70% on your OTA bookings. 
which is a, a big red flag. In fact, such a huge cost. Yeah, we had one yep. property that they had actually never done marketing before us, like yep. spent ad dollars, right? Correct. Uh, and they were God, maybe at like 40% or something of OTAs. And we told them, we're going to get you to 12%. That's going to take some time, but that's like, that's our average for a vibrant property. And just last month they were at exactly at 12%. Yeah, I remember hitting and 12. so they had saved, um, $6,000 in commission year over year from that same month because of their reduction in OTAs. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely absurd. Okay. Uh, tip number three is just, you're getting, or excuse me, sign number three is that you're getting consistent poor reviews. This doesn't necessarily mean like about the stay, just if you're getting two, three, I, I would even lump in, like if you're getting a bulk of four star reviews, you just need to move the needle yeah. a little <clears throat> bit further. And some of that can come down to how the guest engages uh, with the, the staff, how the staff engages back, what the experience is like on the time for the housekeeping to bring a request, the quality of the food, whatever. Right. But if you are consistently getting mediocre reviews, it's time to reevaluate the training for your staff or just offer training for your staff. Absolutely. Yeah. And like with Brad Anderson at Blueprint, mm -hmm. this is a statewide thing. So I don't know if other states have this, but we have a program called Custom Fit where they will, the state will reimburse you between 40 and 50% for investing in your staff. So uh, certainly if you're in Utah and you're listening to this, reach out to Brad and reach out to Custom Fit. It makes it so affordable or do a collective mm -hmm. and get a, a you know, several five hotels groups. in your yeah. area together, right. have custom fit, do the reimbursement, and then you, your cost is, net, is negligible, but right. something you definitely want to do. So last sign of the day is a lack of observation. And what we mean by that is if you've got some trash that's on your property or weeds that are in a highly, you know, visible area, yep. or there's leaves all over your outside patio furniture, cool. if there's something like that, that isn't a skilled thing. Right. It takes no skill right. to pick up a piece of trash and put it in the trash can. That is a give a shit thing. And so if you have a, I, I should it repurpose is. that. If you have a lack of give a shit, that is a sign <laughs> that your staff needs more training. Oh, and it could be as also leadership because that's right. picking up trash really isn't even a, a training thing. It is like a culture thing. It's so easy. In fact, uh, two parallels, one property that does this really well is Zion Wildflower. And it's because oh, yeah. they make it so easy for their staff. They have golf carts, and this is a big property. They have golf carts that have trash cans on them with trash like grabbers, you know, like the little yeah, cloth so things. If, you, if you, like it's gross, you don't have to worry about picking up with you your hands. You don't have to worry about bending down. Like, <laughs> I mean, it is made so easy, right? Yeah. It's just like if you see trash, you grab it, and you throw it in the back of your golf cart that you're already yeah. on commuting. And a great story about that, uh, one of the best uh, – companies for hospitality in the world is is, is Disney, right? Yeah. And so at Disney World or Disneyland, what you'll notice is you've never seen a staff member come and pull up the trash thing and pull out a trash bag. You've right. never seen someone walking around Disney with, with trash, a trash bag or yeah. a cart of trash. And the reason why is they know that's gross. And yeah. so they have a conveyor system underneath all their trash cans. So all you're doing is dropping your trash onto a conveyor system that goes underground goes to their dump. So no one, not is that, that amazing? amazing? So no one ever what? sees the trash. That's brilliant. No one likes trash. No. So follow Disney's lead. Don't have a lack of observation. <laughs> Don't have a lack of give a shit. And that wraps up our four signs that your staff need more training. Thanks for sticking around with us on this podcast, guys. It's been a while since Cody and I have actually sat down and cranked yeah, another one and out. it flew by. Yeah, it did fly by really fast, actually. <laughs> like it's been 15 minutes. We're at an hour. <laughs> oh, Wow. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, well, uh, make sure that if you like the content, share it with your peers. You can follow us on Instagram at Virtual GM Podcast. You can go to our YouTube page at uh, – it's Vibrant Management's YouTube page, right? And then Virtual yeah, it GM. Is on, yeah, correct. And you can just search Virtual GM Podcast on YouTube. They're super fun to watch. We're on every podcast platform that you can find. Uh, if you like what we're doing, it really helps us if you leave a comment and you give us a rating on whatever platform you like. Uh, but make sure to continue to follow us and stay tuned. And I can't wait to bring you another episode next week. Thanks, guys.